If you hold on to the handle, she said, it's easier to maintain the illusion of control, but it's more fun if you just let the wind carry you. <laughs> and that's been my experience with, with what happened to me. I'm going to start back about four years ago to give you an idea of um, how this took place. Four years ago, I walked the uh, Camino de Santiago in uh, Spain, which is about a 500-mile walk across northern Spain. And uh, it was a fabulous experience. And when I came back, I walked it with my friend Tom Pfeffer, and we both said there has to be an American Camino. And we kept, first we kept saying there's got to be an Iowa Camino, and then we thought we better stretch a little further. <laughs> it's got to be an American Camino. And what we, Camino is the Spanish word for walk. And what we meant by that is, you know, not just a walk that you do for the adventure of it, but something that has a spiritual component to it. So we started looking around and we bought Appalachian Trail, but no, that wasn't it. We looked at Pacific Northwest Trail, no, that wasn't it. So that went on and um, anyway, um, a year ago in March, I was in San Antonio for a big women's conference and I was in my hotel room and I opened up USA Today and there was a little article in there and it said, there's a new route opening up, a bicycle route from Mobile, Alabama to Owen Sound, Canada that's based on the underground, one of the Underground Railroad routes. And my heart went boom, 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 you know, I think this is it, you know. So I thought, I, I got to really think about this. And that night at the conference, the first thing on that program was Valerie Tootson, who did a one-woman drama on Ellen Craft, a fugitive slave who fled uh, got on her journey to freedom with her husband William. It was a fabulous drama and so powerful. Well, I was so taken that I thought, hmm, newspaper article, drama, is there, is there something going on here? So I, thought, I was so excited and at my table, the circle that I was with, I told them about it the next morning when we had some sharing time. And Paula D'Arcy, who's a friend of mine and, and was organizing that big event, she said to me, I'll go with you if you do it. I said, okay, well, let's do it, you know. So that's all, we, that was a year ago, March. So in September, I wrote to her and I said, are you real serious about this? And she said, yes, I really want to do it. I wrote and I sent for a map, and that was my first rude awakening <laughs> because I realized it was going to be so different than what I thought it was going to be. And the difference was that when I walked in Spain, um, there were places to get lodging all the way, these little villages, and you could get water easily. Um, you know, everything was mapped out carefully, and you walk through, you know, little villages, and we walked through forest and fields and all over. When I got this bicycle map, duh, I should have known, bicycle, you know, hard roads, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I looked at it and I thought, oh, it's all on highways, but then I thought, oh, but it'll be through these little tiny, you know, little rural areas. It'll all be just fine. And there was a little something I pulled off the web, and it said, um, it was about the new bicycle route. It said, traces paths used by slaves escaping to freedom. And it's got this gorgeous picture of a bicyclist going through this park. You know, I thought, oh, yeah, that's how it's really going to be, you know. So, so then I thought, well, I emailed... Um, Paula and I said, you know, we need to get going on this and start training. And so I was in New Zealand. I got back, I think, about the middle of March, and I thought, this is it. So I pulled out my backpack and I started piling stuff in it till I got to about 30 pounds. I thought, this is as much as I can do. But I knew we had to carry food and we'd have to carry water with us, you know, for sure, and, and tents in sleeping bags. More than I didn't do any of the sleeping bag and stuff in Spain. So I started out doing it, but at the same time I started reading everything I could read on the Underground Railroad. And I thought I knew about the Underground Railroad, but I had forgotten what little I did know. And I was appalled at the history of our country and slavery and what they went through. I mean, I, I was just overwhelmed with the horror of what it must have been like and what they had to do to escape. And one of the stories I read was uh, Wallace uh, Tutledge, who was a slave in Mobile, where we started walking from. He was 17, and he 
Five times he tried to escape and he made his way part way and he'd get caught and he'd come back. And every time his treatment was worse, you know, the, the beatings were worse and um, it was really horrible the things that he experienced. I read a lot about people in slavery and again, I had forgotten what it must have been like, the fear and the terror and, and just what it was like to be a slave. And interesting, when I was in Mobile, um, the first day we, Paul and I were there, we, we took that day to visit museums and that, and the two women who took us, who knew some history of the area, uh, t they, they took us around. And one of them said to me, and we were talking about what it must have been like to be a slave, and she said, well, she said, let me play the devil's advocate. She said, you know, my ancestors, as I remember our history, they really treated their slaves very well. <laughs> and, and so I kind of gulped, and I thought, now what do I do? I'm, you know, I'm the guest here. But I said, well, I'll just tell you a couple of things that I read. I said, you know, I did not know that, for instance, that the slaves, not only could they were not allowed to read and write, you know, they were punished if they were studying, if they were trying to read or write. But if you think about it, any letters that they wrote to any of their relatives, any place, had to be written by the white people that owned them, and they had to be read by the letters, that, the read, letters that came in had to be read by them. They had absolutely no privacy, plus all the other things that we know about women, um, many of the, of the slaves that were raped, um, you know, Sojourner Truth uh, had to sleep by the bedside of her, the, the woman that was in charge of her. She had to get up at all times of the night, take care of her, empty the chamber pot, do everything for her. Um, their children were taken from them at the least moment. I think Harriet Tubman's the one that said her little brother, who was five, they were outside one day and this man on a horse came by and just lifted their little brother up and they never saw him again. You know, they would, and so there, all of those things were part of it as I got ready to go and I thought, I just need to keep this spirit in mind however difficult this path is. And it was really good that Paul and I had, had read all of this. Paul is from Austin, Texas, by the way. So now I get on to my little journey. So Anna picked us up and uh, took us to this house we were staying. And that was the beginning of what Paula and I experienced as safe houses for us all along the way. The southern hospitality was phenomenal. We were taken care of from the moment we left the airport to the moment that I flew back to Iowa. It was unbelievable. So the next day, a couple women picked us up. They took us to the um, National Museum of African American Archives and Slavery, I think is the whole title of that museum. It was so profound. One of the areas shows all, it's just rows, about four rows of feet sticking out. Um, and they're the feet of the slaves that were on the ship and they're all shackled together. And then they have a pair of shackles there that you can actually put on, you know, and just this whole experience of what it was like. And they were shackled that whole time, you know, they were never freed, usually about six weeks it took them. To, to get over to the States to go through England and that area. And uh, at, we started at a very historical site called Bay Manette Creek, which is a big place of one of the wars and battles in the Civil War. So when we got there, Fox 10 News was there to interview us, and that was one of the best things because it, it gave us some credibility on the road. <laughs> we started up, I'll never forget that moment, we started up to the highway. And I took a look, and it was pure horror because it was morning rush hour, and all the traffic was coming. This was not a country road, as I had anticipated. And there was no shoulder across. You'll see, I have a picture of this long bridge we had to go across. I looked at Paula. Paula looked at me like, oh my god, what did we get ourselves into? But you know, it was really good because it was a tiny little moment of, we had a lot of moments of fear, but a little moment of fear, and I thought of what the slaves must have gone through. You know, never knew it, knowing who they could trust. Uh, didn't have food like we had food. Um, they were traveling through swamps and, and you know, all the snake infested areas and all that kind of thing. But anyway, we tried to get, we started to cross that bridge and the first thing we saw was a crushed armadillo. And I looked at Paula and I said, Paula, you think this is a forewarning or something? <laughs> she said, mm, just let's just get across, you know. <laughs> 